Salute omnes, my name is Magister Cobb, and in this video I will be talking you through how to conjugate verbs, first conjugation verbs in the present tense. So, when we're looking at the present tense, we need to understand a couple of things. First of all, the present tense is used to express action that's occurring right now. English has three tenses to express this. This is going to become important later when we translate our conjugation. Latin, however, only has one. So I want to conjugate in the present tense. Step one, I want to list your vocabulary. So we're going to do the first conjugation verb to love. Amo, amare, amawi, amatem. And you'll notice I have the macron on the O here and the A here. There are macrons that go over the A, I, and the AT on the ATUM, uh, but they are not considered essential. However, these two macrons are, and I do want my students to learn them. Step two, we're going to set up your chart. When you're setting up your chart, you're going to have two columns, one for singular, one for plural, and three rows for first person, second person, and third person. Step three, drop and stop, first form only. When we learn how to conjugate some other tenses, we will not do this step. So I take the first form amo and I drop it into the first slot here because amo is literally first person singular present tense of our verb to love. Step four, find the verb step. Now, this is where Latin can get a little violent because the Romans were a very violent people. To find the verb stem, we're going to go to the second principal part, which is also known as the infinitive, and ah, we're going to chop off the RE. The part that is left over, AMA, that is called our verb stem. Step five, we're going to fill out the rest of the chart with the verb stem. So we take that verb stem and put it in the rest of the blanks in our chart. So we have ama, 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 and my personal favorite, Ama. Step six, we're going to have a stem vowel macron pattern of long, long, short. Long, long, short. Long, long, short. Now, there is a more sophisticated and expanded reason for why these vowels are long and the ones in third person are short, but for right now, for simplicity's sake, you can just remember the pattern of long, long, short, long, long, short. Step seven, you're going to add your present tense endings. Now, a common mistake is sometimes people will want to put another O here. We don't do that. Remember that step was drop and stop, not drop, stop, and add something later. If we have an extra O there, it's going to look kind of weird. It's going to sound even weirder. So we have O, S, T, mus, tis, unt. And the song I use with my students to help remember those endings are O S T must descend O S T must descend The Latin present endings are O S T must descend And so that gives us with a mo, a mas, a mat, a mamus, a matus, a mat. Next, we're going to want to translate. Now, when we're translating, we have certain pronouns that go with our slots. So, first person is I or we. Second person is you or y'all. Now, a point here. In English, we really don't make a huge distinction between you singular versus you plural. There is, however, a distinction in Latin. Uh, technically, the proper term for this is you all. However, folks, I am a Southerner and I speak Southern Latin. So in my videos, you will hear me refer to y'all. Third person is he or she or it. And then the plural of that is they. Now, the great thing about learning this vocabulary and pronoun pattern is it doesn't matter what verb you're translating, what tense, what conjugation. It will be set up this way every single time, and it's worth memorizing. So after that, we're going to drop in the verb. Our verb amo means to love, so we will drop in I love, you love, he, she, or it loves. Notice here in third singular, we have to add the S in order to have proper subject verb agreement with English. We love, y'all love, and they love. Now, remember earlier, I told you guys that there was three different ways we could translate the present tense into English because English has three different versions of the present tense. The simplest version is just verb. And so in this video, whenever you see verb, we're going to use whatever verb we're translating. So amas, the second person singular, 
verb would be translated as you love. Another way we could do it is do does verb. Here we have to change the helping verb depending on what we're doing. Now if it's a mas again, it's going to be you do love. And then lastly, we have am is our verbing. So if we use our example again, amas, you are loving. So when you're translating in the present tense, you could use either one of these three as a proper translation. The simplest is what you're going to probably want to use for uh, conjugation purposes, but know that if you're translating sentences and paragraphs, these other two might be more appropriate. So that's an overview of conjugating verbs in the present tense and translating them into English. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Have a great day, and I'll talk with you soon.